It's a record button. Okay, we're unmuted. Four thirty. Open the meeting. Y'all stand for pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you. Are there any? I have one adjustment to be in the gym. Uh For those of you who are waiting for Mr. Jackson to present tonight, he is not going to present. He sent me an email, and I honestly thought everybody had gotten it. And he is going to check with the secretary and reschedule for another time. But I do apologize. Okay, thank you. Do you have any adjustments? I do not. Public comment? Does anybody have any public comment tonight? <laughs> Lower line. You, you really look like you got a mouth she, you really want to say. She's so afraid that somebody's going to make her public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the meeting, ladies. Yes, very nice yeah. to have you. No public comment. Okay, seeing none. May I have a, a motion for the approval of the minutes, please? Make a motion to approve the minutes of the school board meeting August 13th, 2024, bearing no, bearing no errors or omissions. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? 5-0. I move to direct the superintendent of schools to authorize payment by the town treasurer to each party listed herein. The sum set against each name contained a school payroll warrant, PI 25 that 5, in the amount of $117,742.02, PI 25 5D, in the amount of $31,379.88. Main Furs, 25-2, in the amount of $4,522.93. And Main Fur Main Furs, 25-3, in the amount of $30,791.17 on August 29, 2024. And PR 25-6 in the amount of $132,317.07. And PR 25-6D in the amount of $70,106.06 on September 12, 2024. Thank you. Love it. Julie. Who's the first name? <laughs> Julie's second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Bible. I'm going to ask Julie to read the payable ones, please. <laughs> and pay yeah, attention. Uh, it was moved to direct the superintendent of schools to authorize payment by the town treasurer to each party listed herein. The sum set against each name containing school payable warrant AP 24 50 in the amount of $131,166.08. AP 24-51 in the amount of $1,444, fiscal year 24, AP 25-7 in the amount of $130,030.37, and FA 25-2 in the amount of $2,233.14 on August 29, 2024. 
AP 25-8 in the amount of $146,099.01 and SA 25-3 in the amount of $72,193.44 on September 12, 2024. Three quarts. <laughs> Three. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. I had to take a breath before that first eight minutes. I was so mad. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Five on. Does mommy ever talk to you like that? No. Mm -hmm. One thing more. Yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> it's pretty, getting pretty close. It's just a, a straggler here or there. Yeah. Yeah. Presentation by Randy postponed. Donnie, would you like to read the uh, notification of hires, please? Sure. Notification of hires. Michaela Anderson was hired as the Ed Tech 2 at Grant Street, step zero at $17.03 per hour. Hillary Sear was hired as Ed Tech 3 at Grant Street, step one at $18.34 an hour. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Right. Correct. Correct. Uh, <laughs> this should have been me. <laughs> uh, Ralph Clarence, Esports Assistant Coach, Year 3, Site uh, Step 4, 2400, Card, Catherine, Junior, Class Advisor, 3 years, Step 3, $800, De Silva, Tessa De Silva, Grant Street, Andrew Support, uh, NANA, $500. Federico Catherine uh, Firm of Action Officer, NANA $800. Harmon, uh, Christian Harmon, stop reading the names right. Christian yeah. Harmon, Sophomore Class Advisor, uh, first year, one year, second one, $400. That's new. Uh, Heather Gersher, Math Team Coach, seventh and eighth grade, year three, six, step three. $1,200. Uh, Christy Hayes, Senior Class Advisor, three, year three, step four, $1,900. Christy Hayes again, Student Council Advisor, uh, step uh, year six, step six and seven, $2,000. Christy Hayes, Co Yearbook Advisor, third year, step three, $1,600. Christy Hayes, Students Canvas Support, uh, $1,000. Anna Loom, National Honor Society, $600. Kyle Weathers, eSports Head Coach, third year, uh, stipend, uh, step four, $4,200. Kyle Weathers, again, Certification Committee, $400. Angela Jackson, JH Activities, uh, Advisor, year one, four, and five, $1,200, step four and five. That's a new one. Uh, Zachary McEwen, school band, year two, step two, $3,800. Zachary McEwen, instrumental music in elementary, uh, three years, second four, step four, $1,400. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. Deborah Mooney, certification committee, NA, $1,600. Heather Oaks, Junior High School Science Fair Advisor, $400. Uh, Karen McLaughlin, mm -hmm. Mini Bus Driver, $24 an hour. Charles Tapley, High School Math Team Coach, Year 3, Step 3, $1,200. Daniel Waite, and the rest of these will be gone. Um, Daniel Waite, Assistant Drama Coach, Year 12, Step 12, $2,200. Danielle again, certification committee member, $400. Danielle, Grand Street Canvas support, $500. Matt Waite, Matthew Waite, uh, dramatics and speech coach, year 12, step 12, $3,800. Matt Waite, uh, dramatics music director, year six, second 12, $2,400. Matthew Wade, vocal music secondary, seven, year 17, step 12, $3,800. Matthew Wade, vocal elementary, year eight, step 12, $2,200. Matthew Wade, one act, year 18, step 12, $2,200.
$2,000. Matthew Wade, class day, uh, year 12, step 12, $450. And Amanda Welch, full year book advisor, year three, step three, $1,600. Second. We only had one that I think you did wrong. No, and that was that. Charlie Tapley. You said $24 an hour should have been $20. Uh, the, the bus driver, $25. Oh, oh, $25, okay. Um, you can all, you can all make mistakes. I had a question. So was that Karen? I don't think it's six and a seven. It okay. yeah, was. Okay, six and a seven and a four and a five. Yeah, how do you get that? Six and a half or? <laughs> because they're combined. The one step was the same amount for the two years. So it'll be the same next year. Oh, okay, so it's, yeah. it's not still it's six. It'll be seven or seven next yes. year. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a motion for to approve an update in salary. Kevin G. I move to approve Sarah Eastman, speech language pathologist assistant, from step one with a bachelor's uh, 44100 to step 13 with a bachelor's $51,817 due to updated work experience. Second. Any discussion? Kevin? Just wondering about did we budget enough money for that? Yes. Yeah. I, I was going to make a comment too. Um, so what happened there is in the um, application process, Sarah didn't have a complete um, resume, and it is our the decision for placement is based on the information on the resume. So we gave her an award just and you guys approved it. And then um, she realized that we didn't have that information. So then I, she gave that to us and then we recalculated it. So that's in the office if anybody's interested. Any other questions? All in favor? Adoption of revised policy. Make a motion to approve and adopt the following policies JIC student code of conduct, JICA student dress, JICG tobacco use by students, JICH drug and alcohol use by students, JICJ student use of cell phones and other electronic devices. Second. Any discussion? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Does that now fill in all the little loopholes that we seem to have had last year? Um, in which policy? Of all of them. Tobacco, dress, alcohol. Yeah. yeah. It, these were, most of these were all taken in order. So even though we were up against some of those questions last year, um, adding in uh, the general code of conduct covers most of the things that will happen within um, the principal's office and needing to make decisions um, for situations. So that's a great policy. We are we're actually talking about that this morning at the district admin meeting. Um, so fill, fill the loopholes. I'm not sure um, exactly what you mean. I, but um, it didn't, that was the aim for this group of policies to come from that perspective. So yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if it reaches everything right. that we went through, but I right. do know that that was the purpose of all of these policy right. changes was because of right the loopholes that had been. Okay. With, a, with, a, with a student code of conduct, it makes it pretty uh, explicit on any discipline and how it's handled. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be uniform among every student every time. Yeah. There's a really it nice made it very, uh, right. Very cut and dry, what would happen? Yeah. The, the state of Maine, a, a number of years ago, um, provided all school systems in, in Maine with the code of conduct. And Millinocket had just not adopted that system. But um, like Kevin said, it, it really is adds for uniformity and it definitely adds for equal fairness. Um, yeah. Good job. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? 
Bible. Motion to approve the the nurse's job description. Motion to approve the school uh, school nurse job description. Second. Yes. Any discussion? So as you know, the um, we've been going through a lot of job descriptions, and one of the things that we've been doing is um, having individual conversations with the employees. So this job description, the school nurse, I, somehow I, we missed it. So that's why this this kind of looks like a lone soldier. Um, but we're just bringing it in line with the other ones that we've been reviewing. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Bible. See if the boards are one a delicate. Motion to move. Nominate. Oh, here we Nominate a delegate for Paul Cox. See if the board will appoint a delegate to the fall conference nomination for fall conference. So, I'll do it. You will do it. I did it that first year, remember? When I was interim? We're not worthy. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we need to do, I don't mind. And do a I don't mind nomination it. for the I, I, I will. will I will. Would you please <laughs> cease the nominations, please, Bill? You want me to nominate you? No, I want you to get a season first. Say again. You yeah, have to get nominations, nominations for the delegate. Oh, Most of the nominations delegate. So, are you saying we officially nominated uh, Julie? I think we missed a step. We have to close them. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. What? To make them, I like to make them. I know that, that we cease nominations that for the delegate. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. yes. I just made the motion. And then the motion to assign or appoint Julie as the delegate. Right. To no, I need a second. You have to second my motion. Second motion. Second. Okay. I'm just going to sit back. And, and it's because, no, it's because I wrote it because I wrote it backwards. And that's why I wanted you to see something. Okay. So, all right. I, I got a scratch up there. We're good. You got it. Fine. Yeah, I don't mind doing it. I'll, I'll second. Okay. So we've we got we Kevin Libby, who is. Um, approved to do it for the fall conference, and we have Kevin Gregory, who's the second. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> Julie, thank you. You're yeah. welcome. It's over Zoom on a Saturday, and sometimes there's some some real good tea in there. And also, also they go. Well, I like to have before the conference to like yeah. go through with everything that's changed. Like you know, I like to have the the mapping in my brain before we go there. So have, yeah, I don't want. Somebody. Have you read any of the? Things that they yeah yes I saw it in our email account oh I've been through it because I knew I, I was going to say that I, I, was do it. I went through it and I was very impressed with mm -hmm. some of them very mm -hmm. impressed I think it's going to be a more a more interesting time this time than it was two years ago when it was just sort of a there was a lot of um, talk of public comment and the, a lot of that stuff versus what's then, going on this year which is I just hate it when they get stuck on that one word yeah that drives me yeah. Yep, yep. So don't worry, I'll have a full Eddie, report for you. What? Over, over here. Any any discussion on Julie doing it? Do we nominate anybody else just in case Julie comes back now? Okay. It's Zoom. I have to be down. Uh, Even the hospital has to. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Look at that. Five or oh. Mommy is tied up that Saturday all day long. Hey, Lorelai, do you want to sit with me while I go through the conference too? This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> she has my kids. Wow, are we getting screwed up? Yeah, no. So then, so the next line is last year to approve Julie. Uh, the first vote sees a motion. We accepted Julie as the nominee. And then you put Julie in, and then we vote for Julie. I'll move that. Okay, Kevin. Thank you, man. You didn't want to do it. I, I, I knew you. 
when we talk to you, let's talk to you. We'll let you do it. Yeah, I understand. Is there a second? I'll second it. I remember how excited everybody was two years ago when I said that I would do it. I, 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 I'm I'm still excited. Excited. <laughs> any, any discussion on Julie doing it? Okay. A vote for Black Julie Doer. Look at that. 5 0. Oh. Um, That's a hard one to get through. Just the way it's written up. Just all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anytime you have nominations, yeah. you have to vote to cease the nominations and all that. It, it, it's a procedure. Oh, yeah. Well, it should have been nomination, then cease, and then nomination. Well, she volunteered, so there was no nomination. I know. I just kind of wanted to cut it off. But it's really my fault that we're in this predicament, as usual. But we're not going to say anything. Miss no. Casey. You're, you're up. Oh, wait, this, Casey's up. What? Kevin L. Uh, I was going to say, I think that email, Julie, I know we all did. I think it's regions one, three, and five. They're going to have a little get together on Zoom. Uh, that's right. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. I Thank you for year. reminding me. I didn't do that it's, the first it, year. But it'll kind of yep. get your mind thinking. For sure. But well, the reason so for that know. is to see where people stand. Right. right. And try to get the bugs worked out. Before that yeah, Saturday, you that don't that have to year spend year. like nine or ten hours on yeah, the computer sure. that Saturday. For sure. I, I still spend yeah, the time. I didn't have that opportunity the first year uh, because I was interim. Yeah. And you have that information, so that's good information. I'm going to do that. It's only a couple hours, and it does it mm -hmm. fills you in on what's going on. For sure. Ms. Casey, please. <laughs> Business management. Yeah, we're all business lately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will decide to prepare for our FY24 audit that has begun. We have initial meeting on 9-13 at 10 a.m. for an audit entrance conference, which Shelly's going to attend. Um, give us our walking papers and tell us what we're going to be doing, what we need to do. Um, we're two months into the FY24 school year, and we've spent so far 8.28% of our budget compared to last year, 8.21%, up a little bit, not much. Um, ESSER 3 grant funding is coming to a conclusion and we must have everything obligated by September 30th, which I know who is working on. Final reimbursement must be submitted by December 30th of 24, so we have a few more months. Um, I'll continue to see some retraining from Tyler Tech. I have an all day training tomorrow, from nine to four, exciting stuff. Need a nap. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, then ASBO, I joined made ASBO as a member, and they're holding their first business manager meeting on 9 17 at the Capital Area Technical Center. Presentation <laughs> will be MEPRI team to discuss survey work on the EPS and GPA, which is chapter, on prior chapter 16 resolved, and tech developments impacting school business uh, managers management. Part of that's AI. And that's what I'll be doing in the next two months. You do that right from your office at home. What? Well, I mean, like preparing for the for the audit and stuff like that. You have to get here to the call. It depends. If when they schedule the in person date, I'll be here for them to come in. They'll come in for a couple of days. Most of them uploaded to their website. If they need any things, I'll do me and or I'll have to prepare the documentation and send it to them. So hopefully this year will be a little less um, digging for documentation. That's my goal. I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. We have Jan's report. We can all read it. Jan is, um, as you know, is um, shared by our regional um, special ed directors. And so if I hadn't said this last time, I'm not sure if I did when we introduced her. There, she took a look at all of the board meetings in East between East Medway and us. Some of them overlap and they're on Tuesdays. So she kind of like, you know, shared it out one, two, one, one. Um, tonight was going to be ours, but at the last minute we made a shift. So this is her um, first report. And, um, and yes, you all can read it. In general, um, Jan's doing a great job. Um, she's there's a lot to learn. There's she's new to all of our systems. Um, she's doing a, a very good job keeping systems separate, professionalism, 
Um, she's attending, she's very busy. She has a, Michelle is the keeper of her schedule. If you ask her for a minute, it will be check with Michelle um, because she is kind of um, walking her through those days. But so far I'd say we're in, in good shape. And Mia, if I can continue on. You can. Okay, Mia, Mia had um, some illness in her family where kiddos have been sick. And then um, she moved some people around because uh, staff um, have been sick. Um, and then moving them around, one of them got sick. So Mia's not feeling particularly um, energetic after yeah. taking care of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So she did um, her report. And honestly, there's a lot in this report. I hope you do take the time to read it. Um, the, she served more meals um, than she had served in the past. There's um, kudos to her, her wonderful team. Um, they did training on the Monday of two weeks ago, which was an extra benefit. Um, the cafeteria layout at Granite is opening doors for swifter um, service so that kids have more time um, sitting down to actually eat their meals. Um, the HMI grant, she um, her group is going to receive national recognition um, in Las Vegas in October. So they, she's doing, she and her team are doing truly amazing things with, with shifting from less processed food to more um, home cooked food. Um, she, she's just doing a really wonderful job. And I know that she would want to tell you more about this. So it's next time we meet, it will be just prior to Vegas, I think. So um, it'll be a little bit, but they're doing, she's doing amazing. So please do, I encourage you to take the time to, to read her report. Did they actually go from the 37 to the 9,000 meals? Was was it up that much? 37, 30. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yep. Look at the difference in breakfast morning. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I was amazed yeah. at yeah. reading her report. Yeah. The, 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 the numbers. Yeah, yeah. She's so smart. I'm yeah. biased, but like oh, man. very, she's, very dedicated. She's energetic. She's a hard worker. So, so smart and pragmatic and uh, warm. And energetic. she really believes in yes, she does. the in the nutrients that kids are receiving as a as a benefit towards their growth and their schools. She's the same. Really believe she's it. the same person that she is. At. When you think of a. Uh, uh, since you run the school meals program, she feeds every child or tries to feed every child here the same way she's feeding her kids at home. Like she is that the, what you see is what you get. She yeah. believes in it. That's how she nurtures her family. This is her one big family. Like I just, she's such a gift yeah. to our program. Yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky, definitely. But for you at home, like last year's numbers are, and you gotta remember, don't have my glasses on, 600. 674 breakfasts. 3,112 lunch for a total of 3,786 meals last year in FY23. In FY24, it's 3,012 breakfasts, 5,991 lunch, and 9,003 total meals. So she's that, crippled for serving. That is a heck of a change. So yeah, you can sure. see what that young lady is doing for us and what the type of meals she's putting out. And the, the oh. team that she's developed, yes. she's supported them with knowledge. She supported them with time and actually with um, more conveniences. She's worked with Louie this summer to design changes in the, in the kitchen area to make the serving um, easier, more efficient. So yeah, they, she developed a, a real a real team, a team that shows up every day, shorter right now with their sickness. <laughs> Kevin? I see that in a poor staff will to Vegas, how do we man the cafeteria? That's a great that question. Time? It will be three staff. Okay. I might have said four, but it's three. And um, we started by getting substitutes first. So that we, and we actually haven't pulled the trigger on buying the tickets yet. Um, because we were waiting for one person who was potentially considering something to, to do that. Yeah. We anticipate it will be three people. Now. And that, by the way, is paid in full. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Mr. DeFederico, you're on. And, and I see Mia in the report. If you were a little yeah, busy. I, yeah, I a little busy. And I saw a lot of each other. <laughs> was worried people were going to start to talk. <laughs> but we pushed through, and uh, yeah, at the 11th hour, got some ovens fired up at Granite Street and uh, skillet, skilleting. And it was touch and go for a while. Um, so we completed another summer of our deep clean of the schools, emptying every single classroom. Washing every single piece of furniture, scrubbing every single floor, waxing every single floor, a uh, monumental task at both buildings. And this summer, we were roughly four people shy from what we've had in the past doing that amount of work. Um, we basically got Josh and Joy at Grant Street and Ronnie and Ryan, and I hired a, a young guy to help out doing some grounds work here, and he ended up transitioning into the building and becoming a floor scrubber. Um, so... We made do with what we had, and and uh, I think the buildings came out very well. Amanda Welch and Christy Hayes were my two cleaners. Normally, I have four to five cleaners, but uh, those two just powered through and did a fantastic job. I can't say enough about the hard work that they put in this summer. Um, yeah, very impressive. Very impressive that we're able to do what we do. Um, I know a lot of schools don't do the level that we do. When, can't imagine not doing it, but um, another year down as far as that goes. You probably noticed in the parking lots, the line striping done. We now have official parking for uh, our events. Um, there's right around 187 parking spaces total around the building. Um, if I recall, I was over here when we had, they had a football game, the last football game. Um, and it was nice to see some organizations of the to the parking and actually some rows that you can actually drive around people yeah. just didn't make up their own <laughs> i swear if people get into a parking lot and just lose their mind and yeah. all common sense gets goes out of the window uh, but that that's, that's definitely a help granite street we had to reseal our boiler that was a iffy job um anytime you tear a, a boiler apart and it went well um the boiler did it was showing some signs of wear which tells us that our backup boiler is probably showing the same signs of wear so that's probably not long behind uh, as far as needing to do that one um, but all went well and we were able to get put back together no leaks and back in service the next to the kitchen uh, we were able to while we were doing the equipment i was able to get some more protective coatings on the walls fix some things that have been written up in past reports about improvements we could make. So kind of took advantage of the new equipment installed over there and made the kitchen a better place. And we're able to strip the floors and clean the walls. And so I, I literally tore the sinks out and got some of the existing equipment out so we could then do a deeper clean and had to reinstall it all again. But uh, it, it made for a good finished product. Um, did a lot of flooring this year. This is my year of flooring. I've been trying to get somebody up here to do flooring now for two years, and uh, it just has not happened. There's not a flooring guy around, I don't think. So um, laid some carpeting in the kitchen garden rooms, did some fridge, some corridors, spent Labor Day weekend in here fixing a special ed room. Um, I had four layers of floors that all lifted from the bottom up. Uh, was a nightmare of a job, but we got that done the day before school opened officially uh, for when the students arrived. So completed that. We also got some painting done this year. TJ Brown uh, yeah. worked hard. I gave him a nightmare of a job painting the whole stairway down to the cafeteria. That's so, what I'm doing. Yeah, horrendous job, but he did it. He did a did a nice job. It looks great. It's our our new standard Stearns blue. It's clean. Um, we spent weeks in there doing it. I did not envy in that. And the Nazarene Church Group also, every summer they help out tremendously doing some painting around our fields and grounds and buildings as they watch lockers. This year they watched all the windows around the building. Those are things that wouldn't get done otherwise. So my hat's off to them for all the help that they gave us as well. Much appreciated. And other than that, any questions? And other than that, long, 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 and it's very hard work. I came over to open house at the end of high school, and, it, and the building was just so beautiful. Thank you. And I all the parents that I saw were very impressed with the facilities. You did a great, your team 
Did a great, great job. job. Yep. A lot of hard work in the summer. Well, hot, this was a hot summer. Oh, was. <laughs> and the floors are still shining. The floors are still shining. Uh, give it another week or two. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I was, we always, who's the first one to scratch the floor? And inevitably, a teacher is rearranging a room and drags a mm -hmm. table, and you just want to. Yeah. But I will stand here and say I was the first one to scratch a floor at both buildings. I was working in the hallways and my ladder went up from under me and put a big gouge on one floor. And I was working in the kitchen at Granite Street and I moved a <laughs> counter and I looked and one of the wheels had locked and it had scratched Josh's <laughs> nice floor uh, about 12 feet across. So we don't look like guilty. <laughs> Thank you. Who's married? Um, I put up quite a bit in my report, so I'll just um, summarize a few things. Um, we've had quite a few kids move into the district, so our enrollment's up a little bit. Um, we've had some great staff join us and really settled into Granite, so it's been a great start of the year. We've had some uh, training on IXL and on our new math program um, over the summer, and it will continue into this month to use up the last of our SIPs money. Um, we've started having committees working on various things like updating our report card, um, working on kind of one programs, things like that in the coming year. We're going to do more committee, small group work than a leadership team. Um, since this was written, all of our supplies have arrived as of today. The last of our, of our supplies arrived. Um, we are honoring Sierra, the fifth grade teacher that we lost last year, by um, putting in a collection of books about social emotional learning because she was wonderful with some of our trickier kids that had a lot of trauma. So we're putting a, a section of the library in her memory and also she was very much into STEM um, pieces of science and math. And so we're putting together a collection for teachers to be able to borrow that material in her name. And um, Bruce and Jared have just been wonderful helping us get on track with um, the things that we needed to do with technology. And Bruce actually was able to get 20 iPads up and going and delivered today and 40 Chromebooks um, that we'll be able to put into classrooms. And um, with ESSA money and looking at being able to buy another set of up to 40 Chromebooks. So we'll be able to get some real good new technology back in place and get rid of some old updated technology for students. And we've had a lot of actions of student sickness, both in the staff and students this week. Um, and we've had a great team come together whenever we reach out and say, hey, we need this covered or that covered. Everybody steps up and helps out. So that's been another great thing to see the team working together. Questions. I'm really happy to see the piece about Sierra in there. Um, that's wonderful. I was hoping that we'd be able to. Um, these two little visitors that we have here were in her um, very first teaching class ever um, and have been uh, massively affected by her in general and the news in general. And I just think that that's, that's lovely remembrance and memorial for her, to both of them, which is lovely. And I think they're also looking at some of the staff members looking into. Uh, creating a scholarship that Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Peavy. Oh, wait. Do you, do you want to say anything about Mrs. Collins' report? Ms. Peavy's going to do it. Aren't you? You know. Oh, okay. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I guess you Yeah, I guess Mr. Collins is at a football game, right? I think he's at a football game. Uh, okay, let me see what Mr. Collins is doing. Uh, so far, um, you can do the report because football yeah, has been just, awesome hello. and field hockey has been awesome. awesome. Uh, middle school and high school are, are everybody is doing uh, very well. Um, he notes that the first two weeks of attendance have been very good. Um, students have responded well to the new policies in the student code of conduct. Um, just for your information, too, in your packet, you actually have a copy of the student code of conduct. So if that's something that you want to look at, it's this chart. 
I know it's upside down in doing this, but it's that chart. Um, and he, he and Miss Phoebe had assemblies on the first couple days of school to go over some of those, and those went well. And he is currently working on a uh, the comprehensive um, emergency plan. Uh, this morning at 7.15, he met with the Stearns um, staff. And today at 2.30, he met with the Grant staff. At both meetings, he talked about the plans that are um, in the works and the fact that the weather is really nice right now in the fall. So we will do uh, what they call a tabletop um, evacuation next week, which means adults only. And then following that, we will debrief and take a look at and see where um, what went well or, or what didn't make some revisions. Notify all of the public so that when they see that we're actually doing an evacuation, when they see kids and whatnot out, that um, nobody will be um, upset about it because it will you know, know it's like fire drill, it's practice. Um, so that um, initiative is moving forward. And I am um, I was already planning to meet with East Millinocket um, Police Department on Thursday. And so I've asked Nick to join me on that and we'll see what we bring back um, as far as what initiatives might be happening between our different towns. Ben. Okay, so I kept my report brief this month. I did want to comment about our open house. We have not had um, that many people here in this building for an open house in a long time. So I'm not sure quite why we had more parents, but it was awesome. The staff was excited. We were excited to see the parents and the students that came in. So we hope that this trend keeps going up. Um, often at open houses, the elementary school gets a ton of parents, and then we don't necessarily always get them at this level. So it's great. Is this the first year we've done them at the same time? No, because no? I remember when Aiden was younger, we did the um, high school, middle school in the evening. Right. Um, and did like the computer stuff and whatever. I know from our parenting perspective it was uh really nice to be able to we just we swung Lorelei in and then Mirren got, went in to Granite on our, her, their way back home they both did their little go rounds we were able to just do it all in one shot and it was real nice. yeah. I even trusted their dad to do it all by himself I was going to say, I was going to say Mr. I came up to the house and you know I ran like you say that it seems like the parents come with younger children they're more enthused when I came up here it was a couple of teachers I wanted to say hi you're the chef a good year too, and I had to stand in line just to get to do that. So yeah. there were that many parents. So That's and a good it was nice. Yes. It was so very nice, very nice. So we were happy um, with that. The fall musical has started already. Uh -huh. um, so they're doing new scenes this year. They've already had their <laughs> yeah. tryouts. So, so they came from their first practice directly here, which is why. How did that go? We just watched it. But like, how, we're going to like watch. The Broadway musical, like we watched like half it today and think tomorrow. So you can get a better feel for what you'll be doing. Because some people didn't do their homework according to the state and didn't watch it. Okay. Next one. Hall monitor. Come back. I'll give another report. The performances for the fall musical will be in November the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th. So there'll be flyers that go out and all of that. And we hope we'll. You'll all pick a day and come for a performance. It's going to be a great, a great one this year. They're doing um, the Grant Street kids. They're mm. opening it up to the the last time that we did that. She was in third grade and she did Mary Poppins. No, I was first. Oh, third. Second. No, then I'm second. Oh, no. It was second grade. Okay, second grade. She was in second grade. I, I think second grade. I was there. And I think it was second grade. It probably was. Um, <laughs> Moving on. I will regret <laughs> this this <laughs> decision for the rest of my life, but that's fine. <laughs> anyway, the last time that happened, she was really young, and it was an uh, Mary Poppins was such an awesome show, and all the little kids were oh my gosh, Aiden it was, was good. Aiden was George Banks that year, and it was just this, so this is awesome to see the little participate on the big stage. Well, Mr. Waite, when he was talking about it and talking to Miss um, Mary and myself, um, said 
who doesn't want to see like a second grader dressed up as a new season? Seriously. Like, oh, how can you not it. like that? Like they're so, it's so fun for them and just, oh gosh. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, And then my final is the gear up that we have signed up for, the gear up grant. So Sue Buzzell and I went to um, EMCC in August for an all day conference with gear up. And that was very informative. We found out a whole lot more that we had yet to learn um, because this is new for gear up. So they were kind of putting it all together after they realized they got the funding. So what we did find out is that gear up is going to help us with a lot of the things that we've done in the last couple of years with the Melmac grant. So like we're talking about a college tour in the spring. Um, our different nights that we have, like our senior night, when it's all things senior, whether it's college or career, um, and everyone comes in and they learn about FAFSA and we talk about internships and other things that our students can do. Um, for the past few years, we've provided like pizza and water and that kind of thing. So the families will, will all come in together and help their students. So they will be providing reimbursement for those things, which is great news. They are also ordering a classroom set for a dual enrollment class for English 101 in Mrs. Loom's room. So she's very excited to have a whole set for her students and we don't have to worry about her making copies of things if there ends up being an extra student that wasn't planned for. So that's great news and those are on the way. Um, <clears throat> and then Gear Up will be here on September 25th. It's our early release day. So they will be doing um, two separate assemblies, one for the eighth grade and then following that one for the 11th and 12th grade because those are the grades that will be affected. So I'm very excited moving forward. Um, they also, as I told you, had, <laughs> that's mine, had helped prepare, um, pay for the Washington DC trip. They helped pay um, for um, Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, it just went right out of my head. It'll come back to me after I sit down, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I'm very excited about Gear Up because they're going to help our students in a lot of ways that when we first signed up for that with them was not yet completely clear. So it's good to hear anything that benefits our students. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Before the superintendent that we got an email from Mr. Wade with all of the dates of everything going on. And I think that was tremendous. Mm -hmm. yep. I, if I remember right, that's the first year yeah. we've ever got anything like that. All that we got um, in the boosters, we have a whole like outline. He worked really hard on that. And really hard on. I was so happy to see that email because he did put a lot of work into it. He, he did, and to also it know what it is, what's going to be played where, mm -hmm. what's definitely going to be here at the auditorium, and what's to be determined. Right, exactly. I, you know, I, I was I was very happy with that. And I have, uh, I want to say I have faith, but that seems like a really strong word to say when it comes to the schedule. But I, if there are changes and when those are determined, I feel confident in saying that he'll get that all together and get any updated information to everybody when it comes to like what schools are hosting what just in case people want to pop down or you find yourself in those mm -hmm. we are at a lot of places when we travel with beautiful facilities and the kids do a glorious job in different you know outside of our home stage they're they make us proud so. yes they do dr link all right so i have a few things as you'd expect, right? Um, I want to start by saying thank you to all of the um, staff that have presented uh, your reports today. I think that every all the board members, I'm guessing, have learned things and appreciate the work that you're doing in order to make the programs um, happen. Um, you, you're, you're doing great work. Um, open house. <clears throat> so our first days of school, we had um, 
a different schedule than we'd had in the past. And we had some, uh, the ed techs come on day two. We had a shorter amount of uh, district time on day two. We had a full um, preparation day on day one for, um, for salaried staff. And so like last year, I did a survey to see how this worked for everybody. And it was everything from questions on, you know, like, did you like, the first question was, did you like Monday's room prep day? Um, but then it was other things. Did you like grazing instead of having a breakfast? Or did you like a lunch on your own? Like, so I asked all of those types of questions. And open health was also a, a, a question. And so I just wanted to say that, you know, number two, um, for, for mine was to talk about open health being good. And, and the ladies have both mentioned that open house was good. But one thing that we discovered is that open house is a little too long. And so there's that time, the moments before school opens with children, that time could be used a little bit differently. So based on the response of the survey and comments made from staff, and you know, we'll make we'll continue to make changes um, for next year based on things like that. So the, the surveys um, are really informative because we ask questions like, what would you like next year? What didn't work this year? You know, so things like that. So we're, we're trying to really keep the, the threads of communication going and knowing that communication is, is two way, right? You know, if you say something and you get no response, that's really not communication. So we're trying to continue to grow that. Um, recently, like a couple of days ago, we received information from um, Workforce Opportunity in Rural Communities. That is a grant that was applied for for $1.5 million. We were recently awarded um, $1.2 million. It is not us um, solely. There are five um, systems, Millinocket, Katahdin, Piscataquis, Greenville, and Katahdin Higher Education Center. Um, the federal government, this is a federal grant, so the federal government has asked um, everybody to go back to the drawing board and pay her down by $800. So we had a meeting today, Ms. Peavy and um, the Rural Aspirations Coordinator and myself, to look at our piece of this, which is about $230,000, to see if there was any part of that that we could pay her down. And so I went with my pair down head on and we didn't have to pare down anything. So, which is wonderful. And so the idea of this money is that it will allow us to have somebody on board to coordinate placing students in opportunities of real learning, of real world learning, earning credit for working in the um, grocery store, for working in a garage for working at the federal credit union for working at the hospital and for further out um, one of the questions i asked today was you realize we're rural you realize you drive into millinocket like there's you don't go past millinocket you have to go to millinocket so how about funding for the use of our school van or for reimbursement for um, you know, travel costs for kids to go to Sherman. Maybe there's a garage there or go to Lincoln. Maybe there's a, a store or a pharmacy. So those conversations are part of the feedback from today's meeting that will go to the to the major group. So that said, this is a, um, a, a grant that supports growth in our with our community partners. Um, it looks heavily at recreation and outdoors but not entirely um, because for us we're hanging on to the rural community piece and that rural community piece gives us access to any business that is willing to um, work with our kids. We talked about things like liabilities, um, about placement, about credit. There's a lot of components in this um, that we're working through. So again, the announcement is we got $227,250 assigned to us. Uh, we're excited. The potential for, um, particularly at this, it's a K-12 offering, but particularly for our upper level kids right now, um, we're excited. And it's a three-year venture. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always kind of pushing to try to work with other systems with, with the education for our students. Yep. And here we are working with five other systems, and it will improve the education for our students. Yes. And I think that's a great thing. Yes, Thank yeah, you, it, it, it's exciting for sure, for sure. Um, 
moving on, um, I was going to tell you some more things about MIA's um, program. So MIA, um, got, we got the review letter um, August 15th, and it's a two-part review. It's an on-site review, and it's a paper review. It's, it's basically an audit of the meal program. Um, MIA um, passed that um, this summer, and it was um, it's kind of like a feather in your hat when you get the document that says that you're doing things right because there's everything from the source of your food to the components on the tray to the actual serving of your food to sanitation. There's a there's a lot in this wheel that all makes up our, our food program. Um, school approval. So every year, um, every school in the state has to go through a process of um, school approval. Our uh, application was approved on August 15th this year. And I just wanted to talk to you just a second about it because I think a little you may or may not have known from people explaining this prior to me working you, with you folks that we have to have a comprehensive education plan. The comprehensive education plan includes things like MIA's program. It includes um, facilities like Louis is working on. It includes finances like Ms. Casey is working on. Um, there's there's questions. I can tell you how many. Uh, maybe there's nine. There's nine questions that are very very comprehensive. Because like if we take if we take um, food service, we've just been talking about all that that entails. It's the same with financial. There's a lot that's involved in, in getting like that check mark for saying that we're um, confident with managing our financials. Um, there, we look at health services, health education. We have to answer questions about, do we, do we honor um, suicide awareness, prevention and intervention? Do we have um, codes of conduct and what does that look like? Do we educate our, our teachers and the people who work um, hand in hand with kids about how to identify and how to report um, child abuse and neglect. Do we look at um, prevention programs? Do we have do we have committee work? Do we look at moving the the district forward? What are we doing with curriculum? Like that is that school approval. And each of these nine questions are huge as far as what their content is. Um, you have always had school approval and no knock it. Otherwise, you would not have been receiving your reimbursement. I sign my name to that document to those questions very cautiously because once my name is on there, I'm saying, <coughs> and it's here, or it, could, or it could be saying it's in process and we're working on it. But I think that it is important that you as the board and the public knows that there is this process. It has been in place for a very long time in order to move kids' programs forward. When you hear us talk about curriculum, when you when you hear me whine about having old books, that's there's a reason behind that. When we want to have a comprehensive education plan approved, we are saying we're doing all of those things, including clean water fountains, having an X amount of bathrooms for um, adults and children. Like, Believe it or not, all of those things are we're signing our name to saying yes when we get this approval. We got approved um, August 15th. Questions, comments? Keep going. <laughs> okay. Okay, keep going. So it would you would you would expect this of me by this point, I'm sure, to know that things kind of are they have to make sense and one thing happens in order to make the next thing happen. So I've been working on uh, an organizational chart. It is hard to have a system if the system, if you would pass one along, if the system doesn't, um, if people in the system don't know where things are going. So an organizational chart is a visual representation of the structure of an organization. It shows the relationship between different positions within the system it can be used to help define roles and responsibilities for each position. Who is there to support you? Who do you go to when you need help? What does, what does my role look like in comparison to other people's roles? So if you think about the experience that we've had on this board together so far, 
We've talked about job descriptions. We've talked about um, supervision and evaluation. We've talked about facilities. This is another component of saying we can support the teaching staff, the transportation folks, the facilities folks, because they know where they can go for information they need. Um, so again, this is a pictorial image of where people go for what types of services. This will go on our website. Um, it will be there for people interested in moving to Millinocket. Having an organizational structure may seem like a small thing, but I haven't been able to find one here. And I know that part of the work that we're doing is to help everybody recognize that there are people here to help you. There are resources here. There are people to ask. There's people to, to talk with, to vent with. Those people are all within our organization. Thoughts, questions? And I guess I should also say that I think you know this of me too. There have been multiple iterations. <laughs> this was not a one and done thing. Um, there was a lot of consideration, a lot of um, conversation. You know, like what goes here? If you're interested in buying a house in Millinocket and you Google it, what do you want to see when you look at the website for Millinocket? You see an organizational structure and you, you, I'm hoping that somebody will think, okay, if they have an organizational structure, maybe their curriculum is aligned. If they have an organizational structure, maybe their safety plan for bus evacuations is in place. That's the thinking. Kelly, will this be posted on our website? Mm -hmm. I don't I want to um, give credit for the actual pictorial piece of this to Christy Hayes. Um, I, the multiple iterations, part of it was my inefficiency in technology and the inability to make boxes in text and all that stuff. So she helped me and I thank her very much. And I think you've heard enough of my voice. Anybody yet? Kevin. I have the one question is sure, sure. should you be at the fall for the school board members? You know, that's a great question. Um, in many, many school organizational um, diagrams, school board members are not listed. So the two that are over to the left, I feel are really important because the school board drives the policy implementation implement, implementation. And the committees, which are not there at the moment, also help with our direction. So I added those and they're off to the side because they're not typically there. That's an interesting observation. Any other questions? I'm not quite there. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I do that every time. Well, I know it was, this is my fault. I wanted to mention, um, that um, tomorrow is the date 9-11. Um, and I, I just I picked out these two quotes to, to end my um, talk with because I don't want us ever to forget why we're so fortunate to sit here. Even the smallest act of service, the simplest act of kindness is a way to honor those we lost, a way to reclaim the spirit of unity that followed 9-11. If we learn nothing else from this tra tragedy, we learn that life is short and there is no time for hate. And with that, I do conclude. I would hate it from the set. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any comments, questions? No. Little comments? Little comments. Yeah. Now that a football game this weekend and the junior class is having a uh, food sale to raise over funds. Nice. Okay, upcoming meetings are October 8th and November 5th. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? 5 0 to adjourn. <laughs> you yeah. held your hand up. Thank you. Meeting adjourned at 5.33. Thank you, everybody. Ooh.